so my next question is directed to Yaya, uh, whether what we think that these AI conversational platforms will actually take over the app, uh, mobile app-based experiences in the future, whether we see that the Google Assistants and Siri's will actually be the prime interfaces which this target segment will take over and will take their liking to, then to the static mobile apps, which I think everybody is right now uh, kind of liking it that bringing up fancy mobile apps. So uh, does this statement true that conversation UIs and conversation interfaces is actually the right interfaces for the future? Yeah, I think um, over, uh, overall, broadly, I agree with that statement that uh, the conversational channels are the right channels for doing financial services. That's the broader statement. And this is a simple fact that we have to exist where the customers are. So customers do not roll out of the bed in the morning thinking I'm going to go into a bank Alphala or JRS or some other bank's app to do payments or bill payments. Uh, the first thing we do in the morning is to go and check our WhatsApps and Facebooks and WeChats. So we have to exist where the customers are. That's the first thing. Now within that, uh, by conversational uh, bot style banking is what you mean, is, can, uh, is instructing in a natural speech language to your phone, talking to your phone, uh, and conducting the financial transactions. Uh, yes, absolutely. Uh, I think that's a lot more user-friendly experience than even the app in itself. Um, so, so I agree with that. And also, it's closer to the natural human behavior. Uh, I would also agree. Uh, but, but I think my overarching principle would remain that we have to exist and provide the convenience banking where the customer is and in the mode that they prefer. So in the mode that they prefer, so ye conversational banking uh, is understandable. But where they are, are unfortunately, whether we like it or not, they are on social media apps. They are not on the banking apps. Uh, so I think if we can combine and harness the power of the two, to provide conversational banking at the social media platforms where the customers exist, that's probably a much more powerful proposition. Okay, thank you. So, yeah, interestingly, so this leads us to to, to really think that when, when we see we are seeing in Pakistani market players using this technology to bring down the conver uh, conversion cost of uh, the customer. So, my next question would be to Yaya uh, that. Uh, do you think that now, now is the right time for organizations to really rethink the business model? Because as we believe that the first important aspect for any organization to, is to gain the relationship, customer itself first, and then we can have uh, the, the transactions happening from that customer. So if, if these technologies is giving us this leverage to get the conversion cord of the customer really low down, so usually because of this, most of the organizations work on a large ticket, low volume kind of model. So do you think that now it's the right time to rethink this model where we can think of uh, larger volumes and low ticket kind of business model thinking rather than the other way around? Yeah, I mean, uh, absolutely. You're talking to the wrong person if I said no, because uh, again, uh, in my previous organization, Easy Pesa, we believed in the same thing. Uh, we never believed in large ticket, small volume, which was completely reverse of how banks conventionally think. We thought of small tickets, but large volume of the number of people. And we, to a relatively, to a relative scale, we were still a data-driven organization. We, we made many decisions at the time, uh, which was to actually acquire the customer's data and then increase the wallet penetration through the acquisition of that data, as opposed to trying to make uh, money from the first product that we sell, uh, which is also for those of you who work in banks can relate to that feeling that you launch a product and it has to be profit making from day one. It doesn't work uh, like this anywhere. So I think, uh, yes, uh, uh, for those of you uh, who heard me speak in the morning, I talked about uh, the number of products 
we all have in our respective organizations and then the focus uh, that we have on those products and it's not humanly possible uh, for us uh, to actually or anyone to get to know all of those hundred odd products that we all have across different segments of the verticals in a bank and to be able to match those products at the time when the customer really needs it. So I'm talking about contextually correct marketing then. Uh, but digital does that for you uh, and nobody stops you from and it's not about a product rationalization discussion. In fact, I would encourage to have 1000 products but each product customized to actually meet the need of the customer at the time when the customer needs it. So you can have a database of products of 1000 products, why limit on 100 products, right? But because it's a machine learning and artificial intelligence that uses the data to contextually match the product at the time when the customer is browsing for that home finance deal on the web, as opposed to when the poor guy has popped into my branch to pay his utility bill and I'm trying to pitch him the home finance, uh, that too because you know guess what the KPI was set for the home finance for that one month and the next month everybody's going to forget about home finance and move on to do international remittance or something so uh, so the answer to your question is absolutely I think uh, it's the time for us to rethink and the rethink in the sense that not every single product is going to be profitable from day one some of those punts we are going to have to take to acquire the customer data and then use that data to increase the wallet sizing. And yes, the more, the merrier. It's just the reverse of what we've been used to doing so far.